Hi folks, uh, this is Big Mike, Mike Zlatnik, and today we're going to discuss a very interesting topic. There's approximately $1 trillion of commercial mortgages coming due, they're maturing, between 2023 and 2027. In this period of four years, large amount of commercial mortgage paper is maturing. And what does it mean? What are the risks? What's the impact? What are the best operators are doing? So this is going to be an interesting discussion. But before we do that, the usual disclaimer, this is for informational educational purposes only. No advice of any kind, no solicitation. If you're interested to invest with us in our family of funds, please request PPM, private place memorandum to create investors only. Always consult with your attorney and CPA professional before making any investment decisions. So let's discuss this wonderful subject. Well, it was an article on the first page of the Wall Street Journal, or a virtual first page of the Wall Street Journal, that the $1 trillion are coming due this year and the next three years. A lot of concerns about office space, which is kind of the dog of the dogs. It's unfortunately, and a lot of animals, don't get me the wrong way. Some people, dog is a disliked animal for someone's uh, like, but for some reason, just a term here covering that it's a difficult asset class. But there's also a lot of mortgages coming due on the multifamily sector. Sector. The multifamily sector is a well-liked, very stable asset class. This shortage of affordable housing all over the United States. And as a result, multifamily is considered to be a very steady, predictable asset class. People need to live somewhere in comparison to the office that post-COVID world, people don't want to go to the office. So office space is just massively dislocated. Multifamily is stable and has great long-term prospects. But the the impact of the much higher interest rates and maturity of these loans is going to put pressure on the owners or is already putting pressure on the owners of multifamily assets and other commercial real estate properties whose loans are maturing and they're low interest rates or they had variable rate interest. And as Fed pushed rates up to fight the inflation, the payments on these mortgages have gone up substantially. So let's just discuss what some of the best operators are doing in the space today. And I recently visited one of our top partners, who is a very strong operator in Midwest. Razor focused in a few Midwest cities, not spreading too thin, just executing really well. And that secret sauce, the formula to success in this environment is strong operating execution. You can't fix mortgage rates. You can't fix low maturities. Those things are outside of operator or partner or manager's control. Those things completely outside. Long-term maturity date is a long-term maturity date. If you have a variable rate mortgage and the rates are up, you couldn't control the interest rates. You could have bought a rate cap, which most operators have done, the prudent ones. However, when the rate cap expires, the impact is pretty substantial. So what's the solution to this? The solution is to focus on the things you as the operator or the operators out there can do. Number one is raise a sharp execution. What does that mean? It means property management, means executing on construction. It means executing on leasing, being at the properties as a leader of your organization. If you are a large or a small organization uh, that owns large or small multifamily or self-storage assets, it's visiting the properties, working closely with the team on the ground. Success of construction really depends on the folks that are on the ground. Obviously, ability to buy materials in volume from Asia at great prices, ability to store the materials, having the warehouses, having the crews that have worked very well and reliably on these projects makes a big difference versus hired guns, hired crews that do some work and then they move to another project. So um, raise a sharp execution on property management, increasing rents, making sure tenants are happy. It's one of the things that has been neglected for quite a while, but having visited, as I said, one of our top partners in the space, Pepper Pike, we've done a lot of work with them. We observe what they do. They have uh, folks on the properties that live in the properties for free, young adults, 25, 30 year old, and then they engage the community. They, they organize community events. They, they get free rent, but the value that they give the, to the property is substantially higher. So making the community more fun, more engaging, it's very, very important. Uh, implementing texting back and forth on service requests, on concerns. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Paying attention to the residents is very important. Because at the end of the day, ability to push rents 
depends on residents' ability to pay those rents and being happy with the property, renewing the leases, recommending to their friends and family. So all those things are parts of the property management, uh, strong property management. Obviously, great construction management is very important. Having the crews, having a good execution, having the materials and supplies, all of this has to work, has to be in sync. Next, uh, leasing, having strong leasing team, exciting folks that are excited about the work they do, engaging folks, talented folks. So hiring is hard in this environment, but strong operators attract great talent. And that's, that's really important. So what is all this for? It's the race to get each property to what is known as stabilization point. So stabilization point, depending on the type of asset, it's around 90% economic occupancy. So 90% of units typically need to pay rent on a multifamily project for it to be eligible for refinancing on a, with a high quality debt options. There are great mortgages, commercial mortgages available from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're called agency loans. And these are government agencies that are uh, whose mission is to provide financing for uh, housing. And they provide a great product. And um, most of the operators execute, that's the goal, is to race to get to stabilization point and refinance, especially loans that have variable rate today or are maturing or rate cap is expiring, they need to be refinanced. And once the stabilization is achieved, agency debt becomes available and uh, the, these projects could be stabilized for many years with great interest. Well, well they are great, but they are at least fairly decent interest rates relative to alternatives. And these properties can do really well on a long-term basis as inflation continues to be there. And there is still rent inflation. It depends on the market, of course, but the long-term view of multifamily is that uh, most markets uh, continue to see rent increases, steady eddy markets, as well as some cyclical markets. Of course, in the short run, some markets may have rent corrections, but in general, on a long-term basis, rents grow with inflation. So, well, that's the path to uh, get a lot of these assets to succeed in the long run is to get them to full stabilization point with, as I mentioned, strong property management, some examples that I gave, creative uh, thinking, engaging work, paying attention to prospect uh, tenants, existing ones, satisfaction of those tenants can make a big difference. And uh, construction, leasing, all those things are part of the uh, strong story. The other important element, at least for us as investors in the space, is vertical integration. So we've seen many operators that have gone in many markets, and they have properties a thousand miles away from their home office, or maybe even more, or even longer, and they're spread all over the map. When they're spread in many cities, the challenge is they can't give each city enough attention. Those operators struggle more. So it's not easy to execute with widely spread portfolio. In contrast, vertically integrated folks typically have a big footprint in a specific city. Like I just visited Indianapolis and St. Louis, and these are the two cities where our partners have a big footprint. And it makes a big difference. Number one, if you're an operator, you visit the city and you have multiple assets, four, five, six, your trip is easier. Instead of going to six cities, you're going to one city and you're visiting six assets. So these type of things make a difference in the performance of the uh, of the portfolio. As far as what's gonna happen with interest rate, your guess is as good as mine. It's a crystal ball question, of course, and most of us need to prepare for both, both scenarios. Scenarios where the interest rates can stay at the elevated level for a longer period of time as the consequence of what's happening in the economy. If the economy continues to be strong, unemployment is still uh, very low, it's very possible that the interest rates will stay at the elevated level, the restrictive level, as the Fed likes to call it, a substantial amount of time. But on a long-term basis, is my personal opinion. Again, it's a crystal ball opinion. I do believe that the interest rates will eventually cycle down to the 2 to 3% target, Fed inflation target of 2 to 3%. Why? Well, because um, the Fed has immense power. And uh, eventually, they are, they're dedicated to uh, get inflation under control. And it's already improved substantially. So as inflation gets back down to the 2 to 3% range and stabilizes there, uh, the Fed mandate will be to keep interest rates right around that range, sometimes a little below the inflation level, sometimes a little, uh, little above. In general, it won't be a ZERP. It won't be zero interest rate policy, but it'll be somewhere in that range. And that 2 to 3% range versus uh, on the Fed funds rate versus the 5%, 5 and a quarter, 5 and a half, that we, we're seeing now, the there will be a lot less pressure on real estate. 
In addition, long-term interest rates should, on a long-term basis, cycle back down to the inflation targets. In other words, 10-year Treasury, which is hovering around 4% now, should cycle back down to 3% or even below. And that'll make a substantial positive impact on overall real estate. So in the short run, there's pressure on real estate, existing investments, but it's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity for the new money to, to go to work. There are already loans that are in distress. There are banks and other lenders that are uh, dealing with distress situations. And sooner or later, some of these distress situations might become an REOs. Banks may need to foreclose or, or they may, may demand a distress sale. And uh, th these uh, type of deals will become opportunities for the fresh capital. So if you are um, an investor with capital on sidelines, stand by. We'll have some really interesting opportunities in the hopefully near future. But in the time being, it's a little bit quiet. The, the problems are not yet surfacing in the volume that becoming concerning. Also, the other interesting thing is that once these problems start surfacing in volume, the Fed is likely consider start, uh, to start easing. So that, that's something to keep in mind that the Fed historically is not going to likely to keep the interest rates at this restricted level for too long. What does it mean? It means that restricted level is typically a level that they achieve now or maybe another quarter. Uh, depends on what's going to happen in the September meeting of 2023. However, the the time that they keep these rates at the peak are usually between six and up to nine months. In some cases, a little longer, maybe 12 months. But that's probably the uh, longest that they've done on a well, whenever they've done uh, interest rate hikes. Again, past doesn't tell us what the future is going to do. Past results or past data or past events don't necessarily guarantee or are indicative of a future. But the patterns, there are certain observations you can make, and generally you can extrapolate what the future may look like. So in my opinion, again, this cycle, they'll probably keep it between 6 to 12 months at the peak, which means good portion of 24 will be still at the restrictive level. But as the problems start surfacing in real estate, and uh, hopefully overall the economy will start slowing down, we'll see other parts of the economy that need easing and, and reduction of the interest rates. Fed will at that point, hopefully, start uh, moving in the in the easing direction. So buckle up a little bit for the uh, stormy weather. As much as the economy would appear to be doing well, I still feel, this is my personal opinion, that a real recession is coming. It might not be a very severe recession, but still something that the Fed is on a mission to induce. And they will do that as that's the primary methodology to continue to fight against the inflation. So Thank you for listening. Until the next time, appreciate you.